This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get going with another Larry Bubbles Brown, the guy who, the only guy that we never see when we do these interviews because we just put up a picture of him with his name and that's it, you know. Well, I'm better audio than visual. I'm not a visual person. uh, Oh, you're not a visual person? I think you are. In fact, I suddenly realized, you know, you, you only did two shots on Letterman. Mm-hmm. Not because you were bad, but because you were lazy. <laughs> and the the amount of time between his two appearances on David Letterman was twenty years, right? Twenty one. Twenty one years. Second time you were on, did, did Dave even remember you had been on? They mentioned him to me, and after my set, he started to, when they turned the audio, the lights down, he started talking to me, and when I came back to the green room, they said uh, he never talked to anybody. That thought that was really weird, and he was really very cool to me. Yeah, yeah. oh, wow. Wow. That's, uh, that's, that's interesting. But anyway, you went 21 years, and um, I saw you on both of them. I thought the, right. it, the second set, I think, was better than the first one. Uh, oh, definitely. Because yeah, was, because uh, you, you had years to perfect yeah. the act, okay? But the first time you went on, I went, as I watched you, this guy's made for television. Really? <laughs> yeah, and here's the reason why. Television is a close-up medium. Comedy stages aren't. Comedy stages, everybody's watching you from a, somewhat of a way from you. They're seeing your whole body. They're not seeing your face as much. And that's fir- what I thought. So that's why I thought the kind of low-key comics seem to do better on TV than they did in the club. That's and- absolutely right. You did phenomenally because I looked at you and I said, that face is made for doing comedy on television because you would make the little grimaces and the little <laughs> eh, and the eh. Yeah, and, and in the club, they I was making these faces and grimacing, but no one ever saw it. So. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, you, that was the place you belonged. If you had done more TV, I, I think you, pursued it. you would have been a household name. Well, here, let's talk about where our careers failed. Uh, <laughs> We're looking for a black box on our careers. I, well, I, I, uh, my black, what, what's your black box? Do you know why you, I mean, you, 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 do, you work well and you're, you know, you're good opening act for people or middle act uh and they love my hired. black box was uh it, two years before i did letterman i got i'd only been in comedy for three years and i almost got the tonight show when that was a big deal mm-hmm. and i i had one more run through before i got the show and i bombed and um so that was your black that was your. Black I think it was box. a black. I think it was a black box moment because it was. I wanted the Tonight Show so bad, even before I was a comic, and I think that just kind of took the uh, life out of me. Yeah, you remember what a big deal doing Johnny was. And Do you think you could have done that set, were it say five, ten years later, and succeeded? Yeah, and uh, I think if I if I had done that. Sh- the Tonight Show in '84, I don't think it would have gone well. So it's probably just as well I didn't do it. But right. Right. Um, the, the Tonight Show is not a place you want to bomb. <laughs> and it did happen to a couple of comics. Oh, not just a couple, quite a few, you know. Uh, and it also made careers of others. I mean, Roseanne. Oh, yeah, uh, and Drew Carey. That was a place, what, what, you, if you had a great Stephen Wright, you could get launched from that show for sure. Well, what happened with with uh, with. Roseanne is uh, I knew Roseanne because she came in for the comedy competition one year and this mm-hmm. friend of mine Gail uh, befriended her she was sleeping in the 
Amazing Jonathan's bus or van. Yeah, she was like uh, pretty broke, and uh, yep, she, she came, didn't do that well in the competition. She came from uh, Utah, and my friend, uh, uh, I just forgot her name, and I just uh, Gail. She was a was she a hairdresser? Yeah, she was a hairdresser. Yeah, she was hot. Yeah, uh, she said to me, she says, uh, "I'm going to bring my friend Roseanne down," and you know, because what she did. Is she said to Roseanne, "You got no place to stay. You're sleeping in the in the bus with the amazing Jonathan. Why don't you come stay with me?" So she stayed with her down in Concord or some place like that, and she brought her in one morning, and she sat there in the audience, and I did the show, and I looked at her, and I, you know, sometimes I'd say to somebody, "Oh, you're a comic. Well, why don't you sit down and be on the show?" But I looked at her, and the, she didn't she didn't exude funny. Okay. And yeah. uh, I, uh, but I was very nice to her. I liked her. And in fact, I, a couple of days in a row, I took she and Gail out to breakfast and put some food in her stomach, which was probably poison at that weight. Uh, <laughs> and and um, uh, that was it, you know. And then all of a sudden, about a year later, maybe a half a year later, I'm watching the exactly tonight. a year later. Um, she did the yeah. I did the I did the competition with her in August '84, and mm-hmm. then I did the competition again in August '85. And that night I did the competition. She did the Tonight Show, and, and I said that I said that John Fox, hey, that's a woman that was in the competition last year. Well, I uh, she didn't even place in the competition, did she? No, she didn't. No. She did very no. poorly. And but I liked Roseanne, and I you know I I I, I treated her well, and but I never put her on the show. And all of a sudden, I'm watching The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, and he says, and now here's a new comic, Roseanne Barr, and she comes out, and I go, I know that woman. That's the Roseanne that used to come down to my show. Mm-hmm. And she starts, she does her act, and is one of those moments that stardom was created. Okay, it was that good a set. Um, and I sat there and went, she's great. She's just great. And I think Johnny even had her come sit down or something. I, I don't remember if it went that far. But that night made Roseanne Barr. And yeah. shortly after that, she had a series and blah, 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 blah. Show you what a nice person she became. She has since changed from what I've been led to believe. I get a call from her agent. And he says, Alex Ben, yeah. listen, Roseanne and Tom, Tom Arnold, Want to, are going to be in San Francisco on Monday. They'd like to do your show. And I said, yeah, you know, I'm not turning down Roseanne Barr, right? So they came down and they did the show. And after the show, she said, the reason I wanted to do this show is you were one of the few people that treated me well, and I wanted to repay the, the favor. And I went, wow. You know, that was nice. You don't hear that much. No, hell no. You know, people usually go off and make it and go, fuck that guy. Yeah, screw you. I got what I need. Yeah. I mean, even some of the ones that don't make it hate you, you know? So um, I was overwhelmed by that. Now, a couple of years later, I wanted to have her on the show, and I got a hold of the people in L.A., and they got back to me, and she said, the, 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 the assistant or whatever said, she doesn't know you. And I went, what? (laughs) <laughs> you know, she knew me enough to come back and see me a second time, you know. So anyway, that was, uh, uh, you know, that was it with Roseanne. But that's a good example of, of people who go on The Tonight Show, kill it, and have a career. Um, well, I was said they, he had 17 million viewers then. At, and I, I think they barely get 2 million now, like for Colbert. So it was such a... The, big the, deal to do that show. Oh, it was a big deal to do it. And the fact is, the industry was watching, you know? Yeah, for sure. And and you could guarantee that if somebody killed on The Tonight Show on a Monday by Wednesday, one or, uh, network or another would have made a deal with them to do a series. You know, they did series with a lot of people who really did well on The Tonight Show, and then they found out they couldn't carry a series or the series was not thought out. There was a comedian I saw... A clip of him on YouTube the other day that you may or may not. Re- I'm sure you remember him because you re- don't. You remember everything. 
a hard. Well, I don't know about that. Uh, Jimmy Brogan. Oh, sure. Brogan uh, actually booked the Tonight Show for a few years. Well, he then went to work for Leno, is yeah. what happened. Uh, because Leno knew him out of the comedy stuff. But Brogan had his own sitcom. But oh, he, he did? Yeah. I didn't he, know that. He, was, he had a sitcom that was the offshoot of Mork and Mindy. Okay? And went on after Mork and Mindy. And he, everyone was saying, this is the new Robin Williams. Well, he wasn't the new Robin Williams. He didn't come close. He wasn't the same type of comedian. But he uh, he went on the Tonight Show, killed, and got this deal. And so he had a series, and it failed miserably. So nobody ever offered him another one. <laughs> you know, you fail once, that's it. You're out. You know. Well, he uh, he did he did mostly crowd work, uh, so he's not your typical Tonight Show comedian. That's weird. Well, well that's what they said uh, on this documentary I was watching. That the reason he failed was because his strongest suit was working the audience. And there was, they didn't put him in a format where he got to work the audience. I mean, the smartest thing I think that uh, Seinfeld ever did was he threw out his credentials at the beginning of every show as he was doing stand-up. You know, and then, then they had the show. So you kind of understood where he was coming from. Right, and they were showing him at his best when he was doing stand-up. The whole concept of Seinfeld was um, a comedian doing stand-up. This is where he got his material, and then they would do the show. And somewhere in the show, if he did a thing about airplanes, it was a show about airplanes. Did you ever notice that? Yeah, it set that yeah. up perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what the whole show originally was. Later on, I, I think they maybe even done away with the stand-up at the beginning of the show. But it they was, only, yeah, they only did the stand for the first couple of three seasons. I mean, it was the life of a stand-up comedian. Yeah, uh, and uh, it was it was good. You know, I mean, it 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 worked well for him. And Roseanne, when she did the series, I figured, ah, well, who knows if this is going to work? It was perfect for her. It was, <laughs> that was a monster show. <laughs> well, because what she did is she kind of looked like she wasn't exactly from the best best part of town, you know? Uh, she always looked kind of like trailer trash. So they did a show basically about trailer trash. Yeah. And giving them a certain dignity they had never been afforded in show business before. And I thought it was just a wonderful show. Yeah, yeah. it was well written and, uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And uh, it went, how many seasons? It went about six seasons, something like that. Yeah. At least, yeah. And then they came back and did it again, and it was a, still a good show until she mouthed off in this. <laughs> yeah, well, she didn't realize you can't mouth off in this day and age without losing your entire career. I know. I can't remember what she said now, but immediately uh, she was off the show. You know. It was some. It was some racist remark about someone in the Obama cabinet and or, uh, staff. And yeah. Yeah, it wasn't. It may not have been racist exactly. Well, everything is racist, but these days. but it was perceived that way. Well, yeah. you know, I've often talked to you about this, and I, I think it's worth continuing to discuss. And that is how difficult it is to do an act today in this cancel culture. See, you're walking on eggshells. Right. You feel that every time you go up, have you cut stuff out of your act because? Oh yeah. Yeah, like. Can you give me an example? Uh, you can't uh, do anything with uh, that remark that's close to being anti-woman. Anti-woman? Yeah, like uh, this is a joke I had. My favorite part. Come of on, you you can do it here. Because no, you can do it here. You can do. Wait a minute, you can do it here because there's nobody listening anyway. Yeah. So you know, <laughs> it's not going to. We're not going to make or break your career. Go no, ahead. But, okay, my favorite part of sex is slamming the trunk and pushing the car in the lake. That's, but that's funny. Yes, and you see, it's, it's <laughs> but you'd be vilified for Your that. Your other now. joke was, I don't know if you still use it, uh, but the, to you the best part of sex is leaving without paying. Sneaking out without paying. Yeah, sneaking so. out without paying. Do you, is that in the act anymore? I haven't used that in years either. I think you I'd probably get away with that one. But. Yeah, would you just get tired of the joke? 
I got just tired of it, you know. Yeah, but but it's so in, within the character of Larry Bubbles Brown. Yeah. You know, the one I used to love was you going over to, uh, um, where is it, Oakland or Berkeley, and knocking on the doors of these whorehouses and saying, are you, <laughs> are open? you open? I've got I cash. Have cash. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> Um, well, the other day, they we were watching a thing about the, I don't know, Minnesota State Fair maybe, maybe the Iowa State Fair, where they have this person who sculpts people's faces in butter. <laughs> and by the way, trivia for you, they use salted butter because it works better for molding a it sculpture. Holds better. <laughs> yes, it holds better. It works better against the knife. But anyway, she would take a block of butter and make uh, the Dairy Queen or something for that year. Would do a a, 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 a sculpture. Uh, and all I could think of was, I said, oh, Larry Brown has a punchline that goes, butter? <laughs> You became famous for the for the term. You no, just, I ma- I became famous for making fun of someone who had a punchline using butter. Well, but yeah, but you used to. It got to a point where you wouldn't even tell a joke or anything. You would just say butter. Yeah, instead of hello, I'd say butter, and <laughs> everything was butter. Everything was butter, and the where it came from was you putting down two two bit comics, as it were, uh, right. And, well, and, well, the one comic that we both know who did the punchline about uh, it was some guy that was really bad. It's about cocaine. <laughs> it was got, uh, Monty Hoffman, maybe. He got arrested for cocaine, and what was his coke cut with butter? <laughs> but 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 the way you say it, because it's a punchline, is what was he cutting his cocaine with? Coke with butter. Butter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you then, that was one of your catchphrases. You you just, out of a clear blue sky, we go, butter. Yeah, butter. You know, and everybody used to laugh at that. Uh, well, if there's somebody on Facebook, every time I post something, they just comment butter. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That became, it, I know, folks, this sounds strange, but we're talking to a comedian whose catchphrase was butter. <laughs> butter. Did you have any other catchphrases? I'm trying to remember. I had a bunch of them. I just got, uh, since I was a little kid, I used to, I would pick up on phrases and just drive them into the ground. Yeah, yeah. I would do that in school, and, like, people would be annoyed, and then I'd do it so long, then they'd start doing it after a while. Uh, so, and, it, it, yeah, okay, all right. So, yeah, but do you have any lately that you can No read? current ones, no. No current ones. It's also hard. I would imagine it's hard for you because you have the kind of act where you have to get up there and establish who you are within the first five minutes. You have to, like, give them an idea. Okay, yeah. Larry Bubbles Brown's a loser. Okay, yeah, Larry Bubbles Brown uh, can't get women. I mean, he, he. you have to establish that character. Then you can do the jokes and everybody laughs at them because they understand where it's coming from. Um. And I always used to ask people, you know, what, uh, comedians, what is the first thing you do in your act to establish, put your feet on the ground and establish who you are? You know, and what kind of joke? And I think Slayton, I can't remember what Slayton said, but it was something mildly racist. Uh, (laughs) See, I mean, there's a comedian who probably most of his act can't be done today. No, uh... No, uh, the younger audiences, their heads would pop off. But, uh, they would they would get apoplectic about it. And he's such a great comic, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, I think it was, who was it? Was it Ricky Gervais that was saying that the problem with comedy now is that you can't, you just aren't being allowed to be funny. You aren't allowed to take things, subjects which are unpleasant, and make fun of them. You know, because right. you're considered pro them if you're making fun of them by being sarcastic. I can't remember the exact line that, that Gervais said, but it was a very good... Uh, somebody sent me uh, uh, some mail here. Let me see if I can find it. In which they talk about what he what he said, basically. 
And uh, let me see here. I've got to go there, and i got to go here. And who was it that sent me that? Richard Sands, and uh, no, Josh Wheeler, Tom Yamaguchi, um, and Tony Magno. No, I can't find the guy who sent it to me. But they sent me this whole thing about what he said about the cancel culture and how it's just, you know, it's ruined comedy. Because comedy is always making fun of things and of people. And, you know, if you can't make fun of them, like, if I can't make fun of women, what's funnier than women to a guy? <laughs> to a guy. You know, we don't hate them. We don't disrespect them. Uh, we don't treat them like cattle. Uh, you know, nothing like that. But we simply we will make, love them, but you can still make fun of them. Yeah, my wife's so fat that you know. Oh, you're making fun of fat people and your wife. Oh, I see. That's no, no. You know. Um, hell, we used well, to. Jay have a, Leno just said that uh, he he thinks the cancel culture is. He said you have to change with the times or die. So I guess he's for it. Well, he just wants to make everybody happy. You know, I never could stand Leno. But anyway. Well, he was, uh, before he got to the night show, he was like a really edgy comic. He was very good. Oh, yeah, he was edgy. Most comedians were edgy. Uh, and then when he got to the night show, he just, I guess he didn't want to offend anybody. But uh, what, What's the name of the comedian who did the show with the Olsen twins? Um, oh, uh, Saget. Saget, Bob Saget. Bob Saget. Filthy, one of the filthiest comics. One of the, not one of, the filthiest <laughs> comic in the business. You know? And uh, I, uh, he winds up on different, what's the name of, what was the name of that show? To, I can't, uh, even, can't even remember the name of it, but the one with the Olsen twins. Yeah, and the band, uh, Dave uh, Coulier. And, yeah, but and, uh, mind you, the, the Olsen twins were never on that show because they only had one of them on there at a time. They hired twins so they could meet the uh, child uh, protection laws. Did you know that? That's why they always hire twins oh, wow. to play okay. babies, to play young children. And as they grew up, they went, well, we'll just keep using them on and off, on and off. And, um, but he did that show and I'm going, Bob Saget is doing this just scuzzy family comedy. That's the dirtiest comic in America. Mm -hmm. And, uh, if, if he ever went back to do his act someplace, he would be dirty again. Well, and, he, and nobody could like, understand he, he it. Play, he played Cobbs uh, while that show was on, and uh, every, all these families were coming down. This, half of them just left in absolute horror. They had no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but he probably couldn't do most of his act today. You know, I mean, it's just, I don't agree that you have to put up with it. I only feel that you have to go out there and say to the audience, hey, cancel culture is stupid when it comes to comedy. We're paid to say funny things about everything and not to make exceptions. Oh, I can't do a thing about blacks now, and I can't do a thing about women now, and I can't do this, and I can't do that. You know, that's not, uh, that, that's not right. Yeah, I think comics should uh, fight for free speech. Yeah, and if you don't have it, you're going to lose your funny. So, I mean, the fact that you have to think about, well, should I do that joke now? I don't know. That might get me in a lot of trouble with the audience. Yeah. You know, but the the line about, the, you know, the best part about sex is slamming the trunk shut and pushing the car <laughs> into the river is a great line. It's a great joke. It's a little dark. <laughs> and I'm glad we said it here because everybody's probably laughing at that joke. And why shouldn't they? Your job is to make them laugh. Your job isn't to be politically correct. No, and it's just like, uh, does anyone actually think he's actually a serial killer doing this shit? It's just Yeah, well, I, I think about things we did on my show, on the radio show, that today would get me just... Oh, we'd be arrested. Well, we did this whole thing about uh, Monty Hoffman, who was a fat guy, and it was jokes about Monty Hoffman so fat that, and then people would call up and give the punchline. I think if I did that today, people would go, oh, you're making fun of fat people. Yeah. Body shaming. Body shaming. That's it. You got it. Body shaming. 
Hey, listen, it looks like we've run out of time once again here on our little episode with uh, Larry Bubbles Brown. It's always a delight to talk to you. Uh, these are good. These are fun. Thank you. Because he has a lot of a lot of information about days when I did stuff, and I don't remember when the date was. When did I do my first <laughs> walking journal? When did I do my first show on Live 105? Do you remember? It was, uh, it was February of 86. February of 86. Okay. So thank you very much uh, for doing that because I don't remember. I'll call you up whenever I need a date. I mean, not okay. I don't want to go out with you. I just want to know when a date happened. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Thanks, Larry. You got it. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we're a little out of sync tonight. Just a bit. Not much. Okay, well. Uh, do I look like I'm out of sync? No, it, it looks like I'm pretty much, yeah, I'm pretty much in sync tonight. Uh, I, I don't know what happened last night. not going to try and figure it out. Uh, and I will uh, try and uh, save the show tonight and do it. And even if I go completely out of sync, I don't care. Okay? But if you see me out of sync right now, I'm sorry. Didn't mean to do that. But last night I, we, last night we had trouble and I just couldn't go on with the show because it was so upsetting me. And uh, so I then uh, decided, what the hell, I won't, uh, I won't uh, do it. Uh, I'll stop doing it. And then I went off. And then I went and uh, put the thing back on the air on YouTube and tried to see if we could get this to work with me being and staying in sync. And I pretty much we stayed in sync for uh, 45 minutes or something like that. So... I assume that I've got most of the problems solved. It looks to be slightly out of sync, maybe, but you wouldn't notice any of it. Uh, and uh, perhaps on the chat you could tell me if I look like I'm out of sync to you. I don't think that I am. But it's things like that just drive me nuts, you know. And then you try to do a show and you're worried about getting this problem fixed and you don't know what to do. But anyway, I'm going to uh, bring in all the people here that are waiting online, which is only about three people. Uh, but uh, you see, um, there, there we go. Now, yeah, no, I'm not that much out of sync at all. No, I'm in, I'm in, I'm fine. Okay, I guess. I Looks guess. good to me. Huh? Does it look okay to you? Yeah. Well, in, uh, in the uh, on the Zoom, uh, I'm in sync. There's no pro never been a problem with us in Zoom. It's mm -hmm. just when I'm not in Zoom that uh, we wonder whether it's a little bit out of sync. It was slightly maybe out of sync. Uh, I, I don't know. You people can tell me. Okay. Anyway, how are you guys doing tonight? Good. Again, we have a paucity of people, but uh, we have uh, Josh here. It's, uh, he's, he's usually available to us on Friday nights. And uh, I've actually had a cold or something today. I, I, something that I haven't had in a year. Uh, I haven't had a cold because uh, if you're wearing masks all the time, you don't get colds, okay? So, you know, whatever. Uh, but uh, I had a little bit of a cold today, or maybe it was allergies, I don't know, you know. But uh, see, I have a throat lozenge, which I will now put in my mouth to make me feel okay. Anyway, uh, our uh, I, by the way, we could use some more people calling. I don't know what it is. Maybe I, maybe I got to stop doing the interviews at the beginning of the show. You know, uh -huh. and then everybody either gets on or they don't get on. And if I don't have a certain amount by a certain time, we ain't, we stop the show. Hell, I did it last night and it worked out just fine, didn't it? Anyway, uh, hello, Josh. How you doing this week? I'm good. How are you doing? Okay. Okay. Is our president in a bit of trouble lately? I don't think he's really in any trouble, is he? Well, his approval rating's down to 48%. Well, that's, you know. Uh, he killed some... I mean, that's not... He, uh, under his watch, some innocent people got killed. 
Well, yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, that's, you know, I mean, that's a, that's a bad story. I mean, I, you know, I don't really think he can be blamed for it. Um, no. You know, but, uh, you know, he's, he, it is something that happened you know, under that situation. Yep. That he yep. did sort of, we've talked about before, muck up and sort of create at least the circumstances that led to some of that. So, you know, like I said, I'm not going to go crazy and, you know, he should, you know, just stick a gun in his mouth because he right. killed innocent people. I mean, in the long list of presidents who have probably killed innocent people, we'd have a long way to go. So, <laughs> yeah. You no, know, but yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, you know, that's that's not good uh, mm-hmm. at all. I mean, in fact, it's terrible. Um, you know, I don't, I'm not going to make excuses for anybody, but look in a war, this no. kind of stuff's going to happen. How about I mean, you, Charlie? How do you feel about it? Uh, well, I mean, I don't think he's as much to blame as the press is making him out to be. So, and, and it's them yelling and screaming about how boxed up Afghanistan was that, that brought his approval ratings down. Well, in the fog of war, these kind of things happen. Yeah. You know, I mean, I hate to say that, but my answer to that is then don't have any goddamn oh. wars. Okay. Yeah, yeah look, I'm right. I mean, that that whole thing is a mess. And I mean, I don't think. Yeah. What? Oh, I just was going to say, I mean, yeah, it, it sounds terribly, you know, just insensitive for us to say, you know, well, you know, in a war, that's what happens. I mean, I'm, and you guys know. I'm not shrugging it off like that. I'm just saying that is what happens. I mean, there's there is no way to avoid, yeah, you know, those kinds of things. I mean, the, the real people to blame, you know, are the people that we were trying to kill, which are which are terrorists, you know, yeah. which are madmen, yeah. you know. So you can't you can't stop that, and that that's what happens. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just, uh, you know, it, it's it's kind of sad, though, that he, he's starting to, it, I guess maybe it's because he's been president now for a while, but and, and he's going to start taking the flack for all the stuff that han, it happens under his, uh, under his sure. watch. But that, uh, you know, in, in some ways, uh, how much of this can we blame on Trump? I mean, he's the guy who decided when the pullout was going to take place. Yeah. You know. I mean, oh, right. The whole, yeah, the whole, the chain of events is not, you know, it's like a, you know, like a plane crash or whatever. There's a couple of things that usually happen that lead to the, the big event and, you know, yeah. take one of them out and it might not have happened or whatever. And, you know, Trump was certainly, I mean, certainly not blameless in this situation whatsoever. I mean, he had a full term as president. He, he, he failed to fix the Afghanistan issue or do an orderly withdrawal or you know even though that was this big priority for him to, to end all these wars you know well he didn't you know and i mean he he groaned and moaned about it for four years and then well oh, he, i ended he, the war but someone else needs to do the the business of it i mean that was dirty the right desire, so, yes, the, the desire to get out of those wars is is nothing that i'm necessarily going to argue with okay right. On that respect, in that respect, Trump was right. But the problem is, is that if you're going to pull out of a war, you better know how to. All right. You know, and he yeah, didn't it, have a plan. No, he lit the fuse and the bomb went off when Biden had it. And Biden <laughs> sat there and took the heat and he accepted the heat. Yep. yep. There's no two ways about it. He yep. accepted it and said, it's my <laughs> fault. It, I did it. I'm going to do it. And he sat there and yeah. he took the heat on his balls, too. I mean, yeah, I mean that's what I said. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm I, not going to hold Biden. You know, I'm not absolving him of all blame. I, He did things that I did not like. I was critical of him. You know, but those that criticism was in a, you know, in a context of just, you know, I don't think you should have done this. Or that. You know, it's not, right. it's not Fox News crazy where, you know, well, he, he should resign. Yeah, I mean, come on, that that's clown show stuff there. You know, I mean, I mean, that's, oh, they're asking you know, him to resign already. But he could have done it much cleaner, I don't think. Right. There. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, listen, you know, when you're handed the ball behind the line, and there's a guy coming to tackle you. It's your job to try not to get tackled. He didn't do a very good job of it. 
-hmm. but sometimes that's how it is you know so i mean you know it's it's again i I thought he could have handled it a lot better i thought he made the situation a bit worse than it should have been and i don't Mm -hmm. think he did a great job with it but that's life as an america president you, i mean not every day is getting up and not every day is having it, a perfect it, it, day i mean yeah. it's just not you know right right I mean, it's right four answer. years it's a long time it's a big country there's a lot of people a lot of them don't like you you know um well also you know, to, look afghanistan is a yeah fucking mess well, right last week he was calling <laughs> billion for, armchair quarterbacks <laughs> yeah last week he was calling for the uh uh in the use of uh, a, a, you know, a third uh, vaccination, uh, mm-hmm. a booster. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, today, the CDC says, not so quick. Yeah, well, Oz is good, Alex. You know, Moderna, Moderna's like 92%. Mm-hmm. Well, that doesn't matter. It's more We're than that. It's okay. more than that after I've had my third. Okay. Yeah, I'm kind of jealous you got through. I got my flu shot. The other well, day. the thing is that the CDC today said that they're not going to say that uh, people over the age of 65 shouldn't get it. Oh, really? That's right. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so they're not right. they're not stopping people from doing that. Hey, they can't stop me. I already did it. Yeah, yeah they, they just didn't. From... They just didn't mandate it. Uh, they just didn't, I guess, endorse it as a as a nationwide. You know. Well, they just thing. said. I don't, I don't know why people were looking at that as like a loss. For him or whatever i mean that that's the science of a well because I mean, he wanted a booster for everybody 16 and over well, okay and he didn't yeah. get that you know well but, that doesn't mean that we won't later and if it's not yeah, the right yeah. thing to do right now then yeah. you know i mean I, I, they should probably focus on and, and they are mm-hmm. but you know continue to focus on getting everybody the first two first you yeah. know yep. yeah. <laughs> I mean, my understanding is there are still a lot of people that don't have that one Okay, so, well, there are yeah. there are th- at least three, including me, older people here. Uh, mm-hmm. Ke- Kevin's kind of in that pocket. Um, how do you feel about the Republicans and their constant harping about our uh, president and his, what they perceive to be senility? Do you think that's kind of ageist? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's projection. They know Trump was that way. Well, so well they, they <laughs> gave him a bad time because I think it was today. Oh, to, yesterday he was talking to um, I can't remember who and the Australian Prime Minister. Yeah. And he got he didn't he forgot the name of the Australian Prime Minister. Now uh, <laughs> I, I don't find that a particularly horrible thing because anybody here know the name of the Australian Prime Minister? No. Yeah. Well, since we haven't got our good friend from Australia calling tonight. He could answer it like that, but we can't. So he didn't have the name right or something. He didn't say the name. He just said, and our Aussie friend, (laughs) something like that. (laughs) And they gave him the worst time because he couldn't remember the name of this guy. And I think it was uh, Jimmy Kimmel last night who ran a montage of all the time Trump had the wrong names for people, even people who were sitting right next to him. I mean, that's, I mean, I, right. I mean, like, why do they care about, you know, like yeah. maybe he was thinking about Yosemite Park or something and he, yeah. he, he yeah. Was, I mean, yeah. like, give me a fucking uh, break. Uh, Brian? He, I mean, he called 9 11 7 11. He said it two times in that. Well, that Down was, at 7 11. He said two times. That was when we got. I mean, cut. all all of this coming from a party that more or less endorsed a man with Alzheimer's in office. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, yeah. you know. Yeah. Which is a bit of a stretch. There, I'm making a present. But you know, I mean, what they're I mean, doing is. No, give me a fucking. Break. Is they're, <laughs> is they're being incredibly ageist, aren't they? In all of this, I mean, this seems to be their only argument. Hey, he's a donnering old man. You know, well, I mean. It's, Maybe he is. I don't know, but at least he isn't killing us. You yeah. know what? I don't care if he's a daughter or an old man. He was the person that's going to beat Trump and get him out of there, and that's why everybody voted for him. Yeah. Yeah. Now we'll get somebody really good next time, huh? Yes. Exactly. He become part of France. <laughs> okay, I'm really jealous. Um, I mean, uh, yeah. Go ahead. I just that doesn't matter. I mean, you know, Churchill was a frumpy old man. You know, I mean. Well, <laughs> what i'm saying i mean what difference does any of that really make you know yeah yeah i mean 
FDR couldn't walk. They did fine. <laughs> I mean, you know. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he was in terrible health. You know. For, and, I, and I'm sure that years. I'm sure that Biden knows that he's not as capable as he once was mentally, and I'm sure he has people around him to keep him going in the right direction. Hey. Yeah. I mean, that yeah. guy that talks in that earpiece that he wears, right? You know. I mean. You know, his puppet master or whatever. You know, is that now? Is that an earphone for? Oh, the, I don't know. I've never even seen that. I just, uh, I just know all these people who think you know he just wears an earpiece. There's a guy that talks and tells him what to mean. <laughs> tells him what to say. I mean, it's so no wonder we haven't really ever fixed any of our problems. I mean, you see, well, the presidents. Shit that we, pre- are, you know, what I'm saying. I mean, you know. Well, a president when he comes into mm-hmm. office in the old days, when he came into office, even the opposition said, well. He won fair and square, so now we're going to cooperate with him and help him, yeah. you know, do the right, right. thing. Uh, and so we always had that going for us, which was terrific. But now, the minute the guy gets into office, he automatically is playing defense. Mm-hmm. You know, he shouldn't have to do that. He should do what he thinks he's got to do without, you know, a battle to get everything done. Yeah, all the way down to Newsom. That's how Newsom, you know, right when Newsom got in, like I said before, they had people down here at, at um, Safeway yeah. already trying the recall. I mean, how many times did they try the recall before they had enough votes? Yep. Yep. They hadn't even done anything. Yes, uh, Tony. You, you know, that's why I'm so dis, disillusioned now with, with uh, the Democrats and the Republicans. Because you're right, as soon as he got in, it's like they oppose him on everything. Nothing he does is good. Nothing. It's and like, how many people died in Afghanistan? Thirteen. I mean, we had more people die in New York for the flood. Let's really put it. We in had more people die of COVID in the United States than thirteen in one day. How many? I think two thousand. How many, uh, uh, Charlie, on a given day <laughs> average? Uh, for COVID, it's like two thousand a day are now dying. Okay, in so we lost thirteen people because they happen to be in a place that we took them and placed them. Okay, you know, uh, and uh, you know, I mean, it just. Uh, but but t- two thousand people die of COVID, and we go well. But th- got, those other people were in the service of our country. What do you mean? You want to you, you want to laugh, Alex? Too. When Trump passed that first stimulus, right, and I'm not trying to complain, to me he tried to buy the election. Not only when I understand people were laid off because it was in a predicament, he was giving them six hundred dollars without even collecting a check. Then when they, as soon as it came that that stimulus thing ended and Biden was in there, they wanted to just totally pull the plug on it, and he went to three hundred bucks. Now think about it, Trump was really just handy. Trump was buying, trying to buy the election. He was giving these people six hundred plus their check, and he extended it. Mm-hmm. Then as soon as Joe Biden wins, it's like, oh, we got to end everything. Like right. you, you would have thought the pandemic was over in January when he got in office. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like, you know, it's because they're not really they're not really looking to solve any problems. I think even say both sides, they're always look when Trump won, the Democrats were looking just to <laughs> how can we topple mm-hmm. him? Mm-hmm. And when Biden won, they're not looking to better us. It's almost looking like, OK, now we got to. We got to worry about winning in two years. Well, They're I mean, not worried about I mean, doing I, anything. I, for, They're worried about killing each other. For grins, because I'm so sick of MSNBC kissing my ass and sucking my dick, that I, uh, <laughs> that I, uh, you know, uh, tune over to Fox or to Newsmax or to One America, and I'm, I'm amazed. I'm just amazed at, at. They're not in any way giving Biden any leeway. Okay, yes, Charlie. Yeah, the, the difference is the Democrats don't have a meeting saying whatever the, the, the uh, Trump comes up with, we're going to be against it. They backed him on all kinds of shit for the last four years. But the minute Biden gets in, all the Republicans get together and say, okay, I don't care what he says. I don't care how good it is for the American people, how much we need it. We're against it while Biden's president. I want to know what, wanna know. what mojo... Trump has over the Republican Party. They, he I lost them. He lost them an election. He's got blackmail on him. <laughs> really? I think they I see 70 million votes on him. They see what? They see that he got 70 million votes. And you know what they think? We got to get a piece of that. 
He got 70 million votes. How many did Biden get? He got 7 million more. Yeah. No, I know. I, I'm just saying, like, but they think that Biden's a one-term president, so they're trying to align himself with. I, I hate to say it. I hope he runs Trump, because you know why? He's going to rip apart the whole party again. Oh, well, I think the party's ripped itself apart already. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, I think, for instance, in California this last week, I mentioned yeah. this last <laughs> two couple of nights ago. I think the Republicans shot themselves in the foot, because what they did is, if Newsom wasn't a powerful governor, then. Mm-hmm. He's even more powerful right now because he won that re- that recall, okay, uh, and he didn't have to do anything to to get to get that kind of uh, uh, of backing. All he had to do was not get recalled, and all of a sudden he's got a bully pulpit. They didn't and wait. They didn't wait for all the votes to come in either. They didn't. No. And they didn't. They, was they, they they called it like around five o'clock or something. Yeah. I was so surprised. They called it before I even got the ballots to the county. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I, was bringing the county, I was bringing the ballots over, listening to the radio, and they were calling it. It yeah. was a quarter to ten that Well, night. I mean, it was, but it was that overwhelming. Yeah. yeah he won big. Plus, I understand the thing that really put him ahead were the mail-in ballots. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. The mail-in yeah. ballots were largely Democrats who just wanted to make sure their vote got in, you know? Yeah. They were, yeah. And they must have had that count already, knowing that there's only so many people going to vote, and they saw those numbers. Well, there's a perfect reason why the Republicans hate early voting. You know who that is, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, it, it does give the Democrats an advantage because the Democrats get their asses off, and they know where their closest mailbox is, you know? Yeah, and I had probably boxes, remember that. just as many people dropping ballots outside as I had going inside. Really? Oh. Maybe more. Okay. So, I mean, uh, but, but it, it's, uh, I don't know. I just think that uh, that the Republicans screwed themselves over. They should stop it with this recall bullshit. Yeah. It's only, it, it, uh, uh, they've, de- they've done it many times in California, and it's only worked once. And tried. Just try and get signatures. Even before. Yeah. Yes. You know what I was going to ask you, too? Yeah. I was reading, and I could be wrong how they're trying to push the republicans are trying to push that oh it's tyranny with the mandate he can't tell us what to do basically i read it and i could be wrong alex it's a thousand workers or more if you if they're in a place in a federal place either they get vaccinated or if you don't get vaccinated you have to get weekly tested so it isn't like he's forcing them to take a needle no it's a hundred it's a business business it's a hundred okay i'm sorry then it's a hundred so it isn't like he's they're making it sound like oh you can't work here unless you get a needle he's not telling you that you don't have to get vaccinated but then you have to get tested every week they're making it sound like he can't i'm I'm, I'm, I'm against that and i'll tell you why why is that Uh, if i test you today and you come up negative What's to say you don't get exposed the day after that? Yeah. Okay? I want to know that you pretty much have a chance of, of not getting it. Well, right? What does it take, like, five days, though, I think, to tell me I had to wait when I had to test? So, um, my, my friend, I just went to his place. <clears throat> I'm not looking for a job. I just went to his, his work. <laughs> but they, they he do has to say that for his current job to say, I didn't go over there <laughs> looking for a job. <laughs> they, do, they, do, they do COVID testing, too. And uh, when I pulled up to the front and I parked the visitors waiting for them to come out, yeah, I saw the workers, they come over there and they, they're doing their, their own swab and they put it in their little thing and they walk up to the front so they can work for the day. How fast can they get a test taken? That's mine right. was, mine was uh, I did mine on the 15th. I just got it a few minutes ago. Yeah, Two there's, this, there's this 15 minutes. Two 10 days. Minutes, yeah. Yeah, 10 minutes to a positive result. Our new test that we just finally announced, the plus is 36 minutes. Our, ours is more accurate than theirs. But yeah, they, they do it daily, you know, to, to be able to work that day. Yeah. But, I mean, I just I just think that uh, people should be required to have the vaccine unless they've got some kind of a religious reason, okay? Uh, that, that we have to honor, I guess. Um, I think religions, however, that they would consider themselves part of should maybe give a dispensation in this situation to save lives of their own people. You know, I don't know. I, I can't get over the whole political agenda of this vaccine. How they're, I, I can't wrap my hand around. Who would have thought a year later we got the vaccine, it's FDA approved, and they're all doing this making it political? It's just crazy, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
We I deal with China and India. And the guys from India just are like, they're like, if we could have the vaccines, people would take it. Like they would be lining up for days in line to get it. And I said, <laughs> have them, but people don't want them because of political reasons. And they just like, <clears throat> unbelievable. Yeah. Well, that's because Trump was propaganda and all that bullshit. Everything out of his mouth was like, he, he, I cannot believe how much he divided this country, brought out the kooks. I really can't believe it. Well, I think, look, you can blame Trump, but Trump... Uh, he tapped into something. Well, I, no, I can't it, it believe it. I, he, my he, I, like, I don't what? think he okay. caused anything. I think he simply uh, gave a certain he, group he, of people in this country who were looking for permission. Okay. Yeah. Permission. Okay. Uh, I, I don't think that, you know, let's not take America off the hook on that one. You know, I mean, uh, uh, ima imagine this. I mean, we mentioned a moment ago that 70 million people voted for Donald Trump and he lost. And he lost. Well, that's 70 million people who voted for that. I know, that scares me. Work. That's a lot of people. That's huh? the second most all time. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah. And, but, I mean, the fact is that that's scary. That we yeah. have the enough Americans who are that stupid and that uninformed, and in of that state of mind that they would vote for the guy. And we were in the middle of the pandemic. We couldn't. We were dying. This was not even the vaccine yet. No, right. Uh, right. And they were running out to vote for that. I, I was like, when I heard it that night, me and my brother says this: "This country has gone mad." I said, "Has gone mad." It, it, it's crazy. It's nuts. Um, but anyway, you know, by the way, I, I just want to mention this. I was watching before we came on the air here. I was, well, while actually Bubbles was playing, I, I was watching YouTube in the other room because I wanted to see if there was any stuff up of the SpaceX flight with these civilians. Oh, and boy, was I jealous. They went up again? No, no. They went up once for three days. They're up there for three days. Yeah. I wonder if they pack right. sandwiches for them. What kind of food do they have? And if they have to take a dump, how do they do it up there? I, 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 I want these them. answers uh, <laughs> before <laughs> before I go. All right. But no, I was jealous because the, the best part of it is the nose cone was nothing but one big curved window. Okay? Uh, which is amazing if you think about it. Uh, it's just this dome that's a window, and you can then put your head up there and just look around, and it's like you're floating in space. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. So. Hi there, Alan. How you doing? Sorry I'm late. I'm a bad boy. No, no. Do you have a note? Oh, uh, the mail. The mail. Please excuse Alan. <laughs> what? The mail. I, I was busy watching... Brian's building being built in Lodi or something. That's a in cool Lodi, thing. really? Yeah, I put on Facebook. I know you don't check my Facebook page, Alan, but <laughs> I don't check anybody's Facebook <laughs> I check. page. You know, I like the cause. I put I put on a Facebook. We have a uh, <clears throat> we have a camera. We leveled two buildings, and then we've been building this new building for mm -hmm. our new our new factory. So we had a time elapsed thing. So I put it on Facebook. Okay. So, oh, oh, really? Okay. And your name is again, so I can find you on Facebook. Brian. <laughs> I could just start sending you the stuff, you know, direct message you. Oh, I would let you sure. Too. Why not? <laughs> you know, because I'm lazy these days, very lazy. Uh, today I woke up last night. I was, I literally had a tickle in my throat all night, and I had to take a throat lozenge, and I woke up and I kind of had like a cold this morning, but I think it was allergies. Uh, I took the flu because shot. Marjorie yeah, was having some real allergy problems today too. So uh, I'm, I'm I'm but I'm I'm feeling peppier and zippier than I have. You know, is the weather changing over there? What is the weather changing? A little yeah. bit. You know, it, it it's funny. It's down to like seventy two degrees. All right, nice, right? Seventy one degrees. But still humid. <laughs> Yeah, I got my air on low oxygen. Yeah, I, I mean, you don't want to turn on the air conditioner because you go, why am I turning it on for 71 degrees? The and then you're turning it on because yeah. it's you got to have something to kill the humidity. That's oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, what I'm saying is maybe I should just buy a dehumidifier. 
I was thinking about that too. It suck. It might work. I have one in the basement. I may think about that. Well, here's what I'm thinking of doing. I'm thinking of getting a dehumidifier, and then I'm thinking about buying a humidifier, and turning them both on at the oh, same time and see what the hell happens. <laughs> Turn you off. I mean, will there be this fog going across the room being, you know? I have no idea. But. I'll show you Adrian's. Uh, Adrian's? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, he's going to go get Adrian's, what, humidifier? Yeah, we were talking yeah, about humidifier. Yeah. put it in the room. It, well, let me see here. By the way, this is an ad for Ferrari while you're watching. Uh, <laughs> really? Really? Oh. Oh, it I think I'm going to buy one today. Wait a minute. That, like, they look good. I got the humidifier, so it comes out here. But it's like a little whale. It's like a big, and it glows. It turns colors. It glows. And, and then, then you dump the water. Right? Oh, when really? That's cute. Fun. That's adorable. I it up for, yeah. That's adorable. You get that from my room. Back. The dogs will probably knock it over and drink it or something. Yeah, right. Um, but anyway. Does it make a lot of noise? Huh? Does that little... System make a lot of noise. I don't know. I've got a. Uh, I've got a. Um, uh, what do you call it? A uh, uh, yeah. air purifier, and yeah. when it gets up to fa really high speed, it's noisy. So I don't know if that's noisy. Mine is very. Somebody noisy. just asked, "Is that noisy?" Uh, no, no, it's real quiet. Real quiet. Mm -hmm. And then you can put the little drops of uh, some scents, you know, yeah. lavender or something. So, so. she likes her little uh, humidifier. Yeah, yeah, she does. Yeah, but what you need is a, a dehumidifier, I think. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if that's a humidifier, but I don't know what it is. Yeah. But anyway, you just your phone just dinged there, Josh. One month. Was it yours? Oh, I thought it was your one. Oh, nope, okay. one month. Anyway, uh, so so what else is new? Anything somebody anybody wants to talk about? I think we made the French mad. Uh -oh. yeah, why? Because we we sold a submarine. Very upset about that. We sold we a submarine. Give them a submarine. We sold a submarine to Australia, and they yes. want. And I said it's 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 okay. Everything will be fine. If you start getting beat in a world war, just call us for the third don't time and give up right away. We'll, we'll be, ha we we'll be really happy don't to show. We own submarines. We just have to come operate it for you anyway. Yeah, well, no, the thing <laughs> is, no, what they're mad about is they're <laughs> making submarines. Right. And they were so they were they were going to sell submarines to Australia, and then we jumped oh. in and we sold submarine to Australia. We undercut them. We undercut oh, them, feel. and now they're pissed off at us. But they, you know what they did? They yeah. actually pulled people out of their embassy here. I know. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, we now have no French ambassador. I so, guess. If they do need us to help bail them out of a world war. They won't have anyone here in yeah, person. Yeah, but here's the thing you got to worry oh. about. Who's going to supply us with croissants? And French fries. And French fries. I love French fries. Obviously, we're gonna go, we're gonna I don't know about you. I gave this up years ago, but I'm going back to calling them Freedom Fries. Freedom Fries, I was going to say. Yeah, we're going to have to go back to that. Yeah. But don't, don't the French show up at every war with a yeah, white they give flag up. in their hands? <laughs> it's a little bit of action. It's okay. We're done. <laughs> Come on. Oh look, uh, uh, give the French a little, <laughs> little, little credit. World War Two. They, they were. They did fight. They, they were amazing fighters. Oh, okay. So Their underground made made it hell for the Germans. Yeah. So. Okay. That's good. For like fifteen minutes. Yeah, right. <laughs> for about 15 minutes until it was time for a beignet. I gave up, yeah. No, the, no, the, the French resistance was absolutely yeah. outstanding. They, they did their, that's because that's all that was left, but that's, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. But the French government was standing there with a white flag yeah. while Germany was a thousand miles away. They were they're a little rough, yeah. Yeah. I have a big rally tomorrow, so I'm leaving after yeah. the show. Yeah, so I, uh, yeah. I, uh, I, uh, uh, well, I got to get there if, early. If, if you go, now. that'll be 701 people. Two. <laughs> oh, 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 you're, you're going too, Kevin? <laughs> yeah, I'm taking a red eye. I, I'm thinking of going down there just to join them for the fun of it all. You know? Well, I've been, I've been limbering up and stretching and everything, so I can climb the fence. Oh, okay. <laughs> we will look for you. I well, thought if I took like, a ladder, it'd be too obvious. I think, God, I know that guy. It's Josh. Hmm. If, if you guys keep talking to each other, I have to go get a couple of aspirin. 
Okay. Okay, because I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. having a sore throat. Yeah. Anti, Anti-American violent riots give me a headache, too. So. <laughs> we only, we're only having about one a year right now, so it's really not bad. You've got to defend the J6 people, you know. Oh, yeah. 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 I don't know what that's all about. Uh, something about standing up for their... To support the people that were arrested. I mean, they're being mistreated. They're being they prosecuted. I mean, what the hell? They were arrested for, you know, breaking the law. <laughs> I don't understand it. They need our support, apparently. That's ridiculous. So, you know, I guess they're going to have some people go down. I think it's fucked up that, you know, they have to, you know, they have to put the fence back. I mean, like, it's just so aggravating that you can't, you can't go to D.C. and just freely walk up and down the streets yeah, and just nice. look at the Capitol and, you know, take, I mean, you know, really, they've got to spend all that money and time and resources over, you know, a yeah. bunch of jackasses, basically. I think they ought to make the fence electric. Well, uh, you know, I... Uh, uh, Turn them into crispy critters. And what I out. hate about this is over what may amount to no more than 700 people, and it could be even less than that. Uh, we're we're spending how many millions of dollars? Just like the California election, the Republicans yeah. are stirring it all up, spending the money. Well, you know what? I wouldn't have, uh, I wouldn't have given them the uh, the satisfaction of knowing that we were bringing out the National Guard. And that we were bringing out the, uh, the uh, Capitol Police and all of that because yeah. we were afraid of 700 of them. Well, and the, I think and the thing it, is... I think that gives them a sense of power. If you listen to Fox tonight, which I did, they're all c complaining and they're saying, oh, look, look, they're bringing out all the chains and they're bringing out all the cops and they're bringing out all the... and they're spending all this money. What a bunch of idiots. Look what they're doing. They're closing off the Capitol and they're... They're making a big stink about it because they're doing it because of what happened. Yeah. Okay, so well, if we and, didn't and, do uh, anything, uh, uh, they'd make a big stink about it because we didn't do anything. Well, also... Just like so, they did the first time. What is the purpose of this gathering? Okay. <clears throat> the purpose... Right. <coughs> this time they're preparing because the last time they didn't prepare well, it's and they all, bitched about that. It's, it's also to protest uh, the people that were arrested. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're, so they're if that's the reason for, for the being pro they're being persecuted for being prosecuted. <laughs> okay. Something like that. Hold on a second. Insurrectionist lives matter. Huh? That's right. That's right. Insurrectionist lives matter. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Yes. God damn it. Oh, I L M. Here we are. <laughs> I'm 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 getting myself all ready for the rest of the show. See, there's a, mm. hey Josh, let's let's uh, sell some T-shirts out there. Yeah, with, with that somebody on. Trump, it. fucking Trump, probably have somebody there. Probably will be fucking selling them. Well, you know, I mean, uh, it, 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 they're saying that that's why the demonstration is. They're not saying we're holding a demonstration saying we want a better America. Okay. No, we're, 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 we're protesting the arrest of people during the demonstrations on January 6th. Well, that should be an indication to you that you have to arm up. By the way, the uh, Washington, uh, the D.C. cops, the, uh, uh, what do you call it, Capitol cops, yep. will not be armed. Really? No, they will not be armed. Uh, I think I, like they I, haven't learned much then. Well, I, I think I, I'll tell you what I think the thinking is on, on that is that if they're armed, then there are weapons available. OK, uh, if you're armed, somebody could take that weapon away from you and use it. If there aren't, they don't have arms. It, it, it kind of makes it a more peaceful playing field. As it's hard were. to wipe your ass without arms. No, but you see, you don't understand that. <laughs> go, uh, go, uh, how to hard to wipe your ass without arms? No. We use bidets. Oh, okay. There you go. Aren't you the clever one? Mm. I mean, so, I don't. Yeah, I, I didn't look too much into that rally. I know it's going to happen. C-SPAN will probably have their cameras there. I'm going to be working on something well, I'm writing all day tomorrow. I'll check it out. But well, if we I have mean, our little gathering tomorrow night, 
yeah, we you, should. I, and Kevin and Patrick, we should turn it on. Yeah, there'll, there'll definitely be a replay. So, but yeah, I mean the, I mean, are they going to have anyone big speaking, or is it just the my, my pillow guy? Or uh, whatever? My pillow guy will probably be the only guy <laughs> speaking. Keynote yeah. speaker. Yeah. By the way, have you seen? There is a new my pillow out. That he's been promoting. I, I saw this on the uh, mm-hmm. on the on the um, PTL club. The one with Jesus on it. Well, <laughs> yes, it's the Bible. <laughs> the Bible pillows for kids. What? Bible what? pillows for kids. I, with Bible these, the same these pillow guy? pictures of like you know biblical here, things. Right here. Lay your head on it, so no, that it. isn't it. Oh, this that, is a my pillow pillow. It's not the Bible pillow. Oh well, I don't know. What is inside? Survival. What is inside those my pillows? Uh, this is this is the, the the for child that comes with the full size ones. It it's it's memory foam cut into different pieces. They go around to the old memory foam sh- places and pick up all the leftovers and they That's shove about it into what the I bag too. But it's 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 different shapes and sizes of memory foam that. But who wants they that in your pillow? It's don't a you? food bank. They go to all the old other places and pick up all the shit that's Wait, laying around and shove it into a pizza pillow. In there, yeah. I don't like my pillows to be filled with that kind of stuff. I like my pillows with feathers in them. Okay. I think they they cut the hairs off of all these Republicans who died. <laughs> oh yeah. I gotta cut this open and see. That's right. Well, look at the tab. What does it say on the it tab? It's tacky. Well, hold on a minute. It what? says all new material, shredded polyurethane foam, 100%, made by My Pillow Incorporated. Do uh, not put in your face. All <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, uh, you know, may, huh? may cause Where's strangulation. It? Probably in Queens. I mean, what do you want? Um, I want to know if it's in China. It, it's made in Minnesota. Oh, all right. At least he makes it in the United States. Yeah. Well, no, uh, it is made in the USA. Wow. Here is a guy. I got to tell you this. I mean, before this point, okay, this guy was a very successful businessman. He had started up a company. He'd gone on television. He did a. He, he did a, his pitch. He sold, let's say, millions of these things. He gave jobs to a lot of people in Minnesota. Uh, he made a lot of money for his company. And all of a sudden, he throws it all away. How many of those pillows do you think he's selling these days? I mean, all because of Trump. I, how do you do that? Throw your whole business away? Because, of uh, because he had brain fog from the drugs that he used to do. He's a convicted felon. I'm talking well, I think of. once a drug head, always a drug head. You, you sometimes you, you quit and you're not doing the drugs anymore. But the kind of mentality that made yep. you become drug-addled is still at play. Yep. So you didn't use you know, what I think. And he's got all the codes. The codes for what? He has all the codes. Oh, he, he has, has all the codes. codes. Oh, for the Dominion oh, machines? All, all, all the codes. All the codes in the Dominion <laughs> Codes. Yeah, and he remember he walked out of the White House with the, the all his notes like yeah. sort of showing where all the... <laughs> Yeah, but here's cameras, here's the point. You know? He may he he may not be making much money these days, but he's going to have even less when Dominion collects. Mm-hmm. Do you know that he had a a, 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 a triple F minus on his returns with the BBB? Really? He's oh, really? Always had that. God. He's always had that. You know the yeah. pillows are the, the the covers are eight hundred thread count. It's not that means hot. that means nothing. They're comfortable. It's the most comfortable pillow I've ever slept on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, try and return it and see what happens. Yeah, well, that's a different It'll story. never happen. <laughs> he's got an F-minus rating with the Better Business Bureau, and he's always had that. Go look it up. Uh, can yeah. I say uh, this? I I, can I say this? And I can say this because I'm really not in the business anymore, so nobody, <clears throat> nobody can, uh, can cancel, uh, culture cancel me for saying this. But the best thing I've ever rested my head on is not a my pillow, but a good pair of tits. Uh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. How many of you guys out there will agree with that? Okay. Let's all be yeah, you, politically you know, incorrect tonight. 
it, you don't break that, out because some other <laughs> chemical is in them and well as long as they aren't wearing uh, a perfume that is a problem to you or a bra that snags your oh, hair and pulls it stay out stay away from glitter please that's that the strip club killer oh what We'll take glitter. Glitter. What do you mean it's a strip club killer? How do you know? Glitter, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you cannot get the shit off. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> you might as well just say you're at the strip club because, yeah, you're like a Oh, one. you know, the glitter bomb. Have you seen those? Oh, yeah. These people that are having their packages stolen off their porch, they put a package, put a glitter bomb in it, and somebody steals the package, and then they follow him with a video camera and the guy lifts the box and it just explodes and it puts out five pounds of glitter all over them oh, in the right house there. and everything <laughs> spins around yes yeah, it goes around so and spins and the glitter just goes oh over. it god you gotta you know, years to get that out of everything <laughs> it's a lot of trouble to go to to make life miserable for somebody who steals from you like oh no, I, don't know. I like it <laughs> go on go on youtube tony and google i gotta google that bomb. you want by the way by the way amazon is driving me nuts. They take pictures now when I get my books. Well, no, I know, they take really, pictures when they have it in my doorway and then I go out and look yeah. at my doorway and it's not there. So what oh, doorway I, was it? You know? Well, was it? well you live but, in a building with a lot of doorways look the same. I like yeah, it yeah. because if they deliver it to the wrong address, it doesn't look like But anyway, they take the picture. But anyway, what happened was, is I, is I get this, I ordered two things. I ordered a new uh, air conditioner uh, remote because the old one broke. And I ordered a 12-pack of, uh, of canned soda with caffeine, okay. ice. It's sparkling water with, with uh, mm -hmm. ice. It's called ice. Anyway, I get it, and all I get is the box with the sodas in it. And I'm ready to call Amazon to yell and scream, where's the rest of it? I finally look at the note they sent me. They say both of them were packed together. Oh, they saved them. So I go inside this box, trying to figure out, because this box, I open up the box, and all there's the, there's the sodas. And scrunched into the side oh. is the remote mm -hmm. control. Oh. Did it break or no? Well, yeah. it could have. I yeah, mean, it was right at the edge, the you box. know, against these metal uh, cans. You know, it, it, it just, it, none of these companies, none of these Amazon companies are probably. what they were, okay? None of them. I mean, I told you about Apple the other day. You know, <laughs> well, we can't turn the thing on. Call AT&T. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're Apple. Wait, what does it say there? Genius bar. Okay? It says genius bar. I said, why don't you go ask one of them? What do you mean I have to call a... Yeah, well, we can't do it because it just won't turn on from here. Well, I mean, excuse me? Why didn't I just go to an AT&T store then and buy this thing? And by the way, I probably wouldn't have had to make an appointment. Oh yeah, you had to make an appointment to do anything. I had to make an appointment. I had to make an appointment to buy something from them. Wow, that's I mean, that, you could have did that at home. My that, brother's gonna buy me a phone. We gotta make an appointment. He says to go down to Brooklyn. They gotta make an appointment. Still, he says this is ridiculous. Hey, give me a fucking phone. My brother said I can order it from at the house. I don't even have to go down there for. And I can't figure out. I can't figure. I, I bought this thing where. I pay five bucks a month, and it means I can get a new phone every year. But I don't know, but I didn't do it. So I wasted the five dollars. Now my time is up almost. I want to get a new phone. How much of that money is going to be applied to the new phone? Probably fucking zero. What's the story on that deal? Or am I, have, have I just been giving AT&T five dollars a month for nothing? And I should have just gotten the newest phone every year. And I guess the, yeah, yeah. I guess the cost wouldn't have gone up or anything like that, you know. But I mean, it's just, I, it, it's just service is not what it used to be, you know. It's kind of like, well, what can you do for us? Yep. That's the one thing I loved about Amazon, Alex, in the beginning when his books. I love that everything came out. Not, you know, you got it within three days. It was like it was so fast. He, I like if you had he had great service. No, it's fast. It's faster now. I get stuff within. 
I didn't get it the same day. Oxidol. Usually 18 hours of the time, a minute yeah. of the time I ordered. Yeah. 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 But, Not everything, but a lot of But things. I liked it better in the old days where if it didn't come, they just say, well, we'll send you another one. Yep. Yeah, you get free stuff. You know, not wait 24 hours or 48 hours to see if it does come, and then if it doesn't come, give us a call. You know? I had a $12 piece of plastic item sent to me, and it was broken. So Amazon says, take it to uh, Kohl's or some store, and they'll, re they'll return it. We'll send you a new one. And I'm like, wait a minute. I paid, you know, I'm paying you guys for delivery. You guys can pick it up, too. Oh boy, the hassle to get them to pick it up. That gets expensive for them. Uh, but I mean, there was a time <laughs> there was a time when they would have blown you to get your business. Absolutely. You know? And That's now where I got most they of my don't sex. care. And now that Steve Jobs is dead, hmm. forget Apple having service. Oh. I mean, how many people are getting sick of seeing Tim Cook? Huh? How many of you? I am. He's getting old, you know, but no, but I mean, he just, you know, he just, it, I he know, I know name. you took over Steve Jobs. You just don't have the charisma yeah, that Steve okay. had. Okay. So get out of our face and just sell me the goddamn phone without an appointment. Yes. I was, watching, I was watching this thing. It was like an extra or something like that. And they were talking about the new, the new watch, you know, when they, they did all the permit, their releases, release, release yeah. party the other day. Yeah. Oh, and it's rounded. The corners are rounded, so you can stand out from somebody who has an old watch, you know. And they're trying to make the point of, you know, why you have to get the watch now, you know, the new updated watch. And, oh, well, it's slightly curved a little bit, and all this stuff. I'm well, like, oh. I want the new watch because I'm two, I'm two years behind on the watch, and uh, the well, new. Why don't you buy the? That's what I feel for you. <laughs> no, also my battery is starting to run down, and you know. Well, why don't you buy it from Costco? You go to Costco. Uh, I don't yeah, buy it. From, yeah, there's, good reason, there's a very good reason why uh, um, I don't buy it from Costco. Because Costco only sells the watch. They don't sell you the watch with cellular. Um, they don't sell um, the cellular watch. So I have to buy that from Apple. You're, you've been home the past year and a half. What do you need a watch for? <laughs> well... It vibrates every time Tony messages me. Okay. You're not too good, Alex. Now, 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 now I don't know why the battery died. That's why the battery died. That's right. That's why the battery died. The left brain is going to yep, talk to That's the why the battery brain. died because he kept buzzing me. <laughs> I do that to my brother. Uh, but I'll, I'll, you'll be happy to know that if, after you just started doing it, uh, Tony, I actually took the band and strapped it to my dick, and you became useful. <laughs> you know. So. You know, as I do that to my brother, it's like, what do you want? I says, what are you doing? You're doing nothing in the city right now. What's going on there? I mean, nobody wants to be at work. I, I've, been, I've been good lately. I haven't really messaged you too bad. I'll tell you what's very good with this watch is that it... It, it, it is it, nice. Whenever somebody messages me or whatever, I get it on my wrist, no matter where I am in the house. That's okay. cool. You yeah. have to have the phone. And, 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 That's so, a good reason to put it on your cock. You get extra No, no, no but uh, I'll you. tell you, like, for instance, Facebook Jack LinkedIn. does his show. You know Jack Bishop, the guy who does the show after oh. me. Yeah, uh, he has a certain technical problems from time to time, and all of a sudden I will get a call from him when I'm laying in the other room while his show is on, just trying to kind of unwind, and I get the message. If I didn't have that watch and I left the phone in here, I would not get the message. Mm -hmm. And life would go on. Well, yes. And and I get to sleep earlier, but you know, I mean, but nevertheless, I mean, the watch does. Uh, I get messages, and I can immediately answer on the watch, and so on. I like the watch. I'm very happy with the watch. You know, the, the iPad may have been a waste of money, but you know, because it's overkill. But I like the iPad too. Are you going to get a new iPhone? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's time. Well, because I take video with it, and the video now is even better. And it's, it's uh, three years. The other one I've had for about three years. You know. Oh so, my God. Yeah, I know. Well, no, the new one has better. It has a cinematic mode now. For the way I shoot video and stuff like that, and you've seen a lot of it on this show, I use the iPhone. It's simpler. I used to carry a camera with me for crying out loud. The rest of the video is on Xtube. It's on X tube. Yeah. What's X tube? 
it's a porn site. Oh, oh, know. really? How do you know I'm, that? I need to say, I don't know. It's a porn site. I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't know. know. I don't, I don't know, know what it is. Once or twice. Used to be, you know, got his page. Xtube? I never even heard of Xtube. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. You know the thing I don't like about X2? They'll yeah, message you, so it vibrates and then you'll see the X2 one. No, <laughs> X2 has, has some beautiful women and some, <laughs> and some good porn, but but they also allow children, and so I'm against that. Huh? What do you mean, what do you mean they allow children? Oh, yeah. Well, it comes from other countries, and so, like, I don't know. I mean, you know, twelve-year-old boys and girls getting it on, and I'm like, no, I don't oh, want. Geez. Why would you even want to go to a site like yeah. that? I don't. I don't now that now that that's, you know, the first yeah. couple of times I went there, I didn't find that, and the next time I clicked on, you didn't find it. This, <laughs> what are you looking for? For he's got. I was trying to find. Uh, read a book. Yeah, yeah, a turn. Can you like please? <laughs> read some. Read some. Read some. Wherever he is, I don't know where he is. He was trying to find him for. It. I clicked on this Asian woman that was like thirty-five, and twelve-year-olds came or fifteen-year-olds came up, and I said, "No, no, no, this is not what I clicked on." And went back, looked at it, and it looks like thirty-five-year-old Asian women. You don't want that coming up on your phone. You don't want. He's going to get you know, you don't want to go anywhere near that nope. because nope. Uh, if somebody. Nope. That's why I. That's why I stopped going to XTube because I just don't need all that stuff. But there are a lot of other places that actually, you know, serve up the porn. Yeah. But at the same time, they also protect the site against that kind of thing. That's good. And uh, so you should make sure you go to Send me a list. Those. What? Send me a list. I'm well, a what's guy. the one that I go to? Uh, uh, um, <laughs> it's called uh, Porn Bay. Porn Bay? Yeah, pornbay.org, I think. Okay. Yeah, and it's uh, it's very good, and it, it, <laughs> it has no kitty porn or anything like that. Good. Yeah. And it has a lot of that gay male porn that you like so well. And, uh, <laughs> he wrote it down, by the way. He wrote down <laughs> pornbay.org. And don't do pornbay.com. <laughs> no, that's that's the one with the, nothing but kitty porn. No. <laughs> uh, no, no, I think pornbay.com is the one where all the old men are taking it up the butt. Oh my gosh! This is why I call. Yeah, mm. yeah. why? Why are you, you wasting your time, Brian? You you, you haven't you, 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 here. I told her stay out. You haven't oh. you haven't called all yeah, week. Yeah, bring her in so we can talk about you, something. You, you haven't called all, all week, and you've actually been doing yourself a favor. Okay. <laughs> oh really? I, I tried to call it last night, and then uh, I said, "Oh, did Alex get mad at everybody and say I'm calling no. my show?" No uh, more. He couldn't find the on switch on the computer last yeah, night. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm still. Uh, I'm high still, tech. Uh, I, I'm not having the same problem that I was having last night, but I'm still having it to a slight degree. But uh, it's time anyway for me to play the theme song, so everybody be able to see me terribly oh, yeah. out of sync here. There we go. There's the theme. Hey, this is nice. Jeff, thank you. Thank you to Josh. Josh, good seeing you. Hopefully we'll see you again soon. Uh, Charlie, always nice to have you here. Kevin, good. Everybody was participating tonight. Tony was participating tonight. Jeff was participating tonight. And uh, Kevin, uh, excuse me, Brian was. And Alan, we don't even have to ask him to. He does it without you even asking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Tony's not wired enough. It's time to send him some more coffee. Yeah. Well, anyway, everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, and I'll probably be coming back at this audience uh, out of sync, probably. No, actually, we're in pretty good shape here. It's a little bit out of uh, sync, but if I end the, uh, uh, the meeting, I will probably go right back into sync, and I'll be okay, see? Well, anyway, that's it for tonight. We'll see you again. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we're back here again on uh, Monday uh, at 4 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time uh, for the, uh, the program here, uh, which we do call the pop-up, and that's just a lot of fun, okay? And then we'll be back here again on uh, Tuesday night, same time same station in life 
And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? And tell her I think I'm in sync for the most part. Anyway, by the way, if you don't wear a mask, get vaccinated. If you get vaccinated, wear a mask too. It helps everybody. See you later, everybody. Jack's next with The Intersection.